hello, uh, welcome again. I'm glad that you could tune in. Uh, my name is Dr. Temba Nurenda, and we are starting a new teaching today, uh, which I've entitled uh, The Battle Axe You Are the Weapons of War. The Battle Axe Weapons of War. I would like to read a scripture uh, from the book of uh, Jeremiah, in chapter number 51, and uh, verse number 20. So the Bible says that thou art uh, my battle axe and weapons of war, for with thee will I break in pieces the nations, and with thee I will destroy the kingdoms. So may God bless the reading, the hearing and the reading of his word. Now, so I'm introducing this uh, teaching basically under the bigger theme of we're dealing with now spiritual warfare. And so God is saying uh, that you are a battle axe and weapons of war. Uh, so in other words, prepare for war. Um, and so uh, we are now introduced to the fact that uh, we live in a world uh, where we are in a battle zone. And um, so between good and evil. But God wants to use you as a vessel, as a weapon of war. And, um, uh, and so, uh, as we now progress through these teachings, we'll be looking at, number one, who is our enemy? And uh, so we know that uh, our enemy is Satan and all his demons uh, that are waging war against the kingdom of God. And we'll be looking into more details uh, on that one. But suffice it to say, uh, for now, uh, that uh, uh, number one, we know who our enemy is, and that is Satan and his demons. And we'll be looking at how, how do we resist, how do we fight this battle uh, in the world that we live in. So they are invisible, there's an invisible world everything you see happening in your life and in my life behind there there is an invisible enemy in the spiritual realm in the book of ephesians chapter number six uh, the bible teaches us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against powers principalities uh, spiritual wickedness in high places so meaning there are things we can't see with our physical eyes but in the spiritual realm there's a battle going on the, there's war going on and so God wants to teach us how to fight this battle and win it's not just fighting but we must win why because our commander is our Lord Jesus Christ and he already defeated Satan on the cross of Calvary more than 2,000 years ago and so he has imparted authority to you and me to fight the battle on earth uh, on on his behalf so he already won the battle we know the end result we know what's coming um, and, and so this is very very important now so as I'm introducing this subject of the battle axe, you are the battle axe. That's number one. So, so we, 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 we must know who is the enemy. Now, what are the weapons we're going to use? And then how do we fight with the weapons that have been given to us in our, uh, on our disposal? And so... Uh, in the book of Corinthians, we are told that our weapons are not carnal, but they're what? They're spiritual. And they are designed to pull down strongholds. And that's exactly what we've read in the book of Jeremiah. So you are a battle axe. You are a weapon of war. And that with you, God is going to what? Is going to break to pieces nations. God is going gonna, is gonna to pull down kingdoms with you. So you are a co-worker. You participate in this battle. You cannot run away from the battles that we fight in life. In fact, Jesus himself said that in this world, you are going to have trouble. 
Come on now. But be of cheer hearts because, because Jesus has overcome the world. So we, so we know the end from the beginning. Uh, so we know that when Jesus launched out his ministry, uh, you know, he went on a 40-day fast in the wilderness. And um, while in the wilderness, in that 40-day period, he did battle with Satan. And Satan came and, and tempted him three times. And, um, and, and Jesus used the word of God to defeat Satan because Satan was working on the mind. Now, the number one strategy that Satan and the demons use is to work on the mind. They invade human beings via the mind. And we'll discuss a little bit more uh, on that one uh, as we go along. But suffice it to say that Jesus told Satan, it is written. So he used the written word. Now, what, what do we learn from there? In the book of Revelation chapter 12 and verse number 11, the Bible says they overcame by, number one, the blood of the Lamb, okay? And they overcame by the word, come on now, by the word of their testimony. <laughs> Meaning, the weapons that we carry can be categorized in two groups. The first group of the weapons that we carry is the blood of Jesus. And then the second weapon system that we carry is the word of God, which is also the name of Jesus. Because the name Jesus and the word are synonymous. Because you remember in the book of John, uh, chapter 1, we are told that in the beginning was the word the word was with God, the word was God, and the word became flesh and dwelled among us. Now, so you can literally uh, tell from there that the word is and Jesus, they are synonymous. So he has given us this, God has given us these two weapons, the blood of Jesus and the name that is above all names. So that's the name of Jesus at the at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow, every tongue must confess. So it does not matter what battle you are going through, even as I'm speaking to you now. These two weapons are the most lethal weapons against any demonic system uh, that, that the enemy can use against you and me. And so, and so uh, Jesus applied that system to defeat Satan in that wilderness when he was fasting for 40 days. Now, so in the book of Corinthians, there's a further description of the weapons that we carry. Uh, the Bible says our weapons are not carnal, so we are not fighting through the flesh. So the weapons that we use, they are spiritual. Now, they are spiritual and they are powerful to pull down any stronghold. And that's why Jeremiah is saying that you are a battle axe and weapons of war. And that with you, God is going to break to pieces nations. With you, God is going to pull down every dark kingdom that is operating against you and me. And so you can stand bold and strong because Jesus has already made a statement that in this world you're going to have trouble. But be of cheer hearts why because jesus has overcome the world meaning if you have jesus on the inside of you the same power that raised jesus from the dead will quicken you will make you alive that is the authority of a believer that is the authority we'll talk a little bit more on the authority of the believer uh, because you are going to destroy the kingdoms of Satan. You're going to destroy demons based on the authority that you have as a believer. And this is very, very important to know because we, we it says, the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. So it's a, it has nothing to do with you. It is not about flesh. It's about the spiritual the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, the same spirit will quicken you. The same spirit will empower you. That's why Jesus now says, 
all authority has been given unto me. And that authority, that same power, he says, he gave to you and me. He says, now, because I've given you this authority, I've given you this power, you can now trade on scorpions and lions. You can cast out devil. You can lay hands on the sick and they will recover. And you can raise the dead. This is delegated power from on high. Come on now. And so, and so, uh, 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 it's, some people look, it's, it has nothing to do with flesh. It is all in the spiritual realm. Of course, we know uh, in the book of Acts, uh, where uh, uh, Paul now uh, uh, was on the island. Remember the shipwreck, the ship they were in um, um, was involved in, in, in a, uh, a shipwreck. There was a, a contrary wind called Eurocrydon. And in that wind, uh, Paul prayed to God and, and, and God gave him a revelation that no one on that ship was going to die, even though they're in the midst of a storm, in the midst of a contrary wind called Euroclidon. But God said, as long as you stay on that ship, no one will die. And guess what happened? The ship began to break into pieces. Come on now. The ship began to break into pieces and the soldiers wanted to start shooting these prisoners because the, the ship was carrying prisoners. But then God stopped them. He says, no, 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 don't shoot them. And the commander of that ship says, whoever is able to swim, let him be the first one to jump on the water. And all the prisoners escaped that storm even using the broken pieces of that boat. Do you know what that boat meant? That is Jesus. That wood, that broken piece of wood, that is the cross of Calvary. That is the power that will take you out of your storm. The Bible says no temptation, no trial has come to you except that which is common to man. And that with every trial, with every temptation, God has made a way out. Meaning your escape is within your trial. Your way out is within your trial. And so for these people on that boat, although it was breaking to pieces, remember, your way out, God has made a way out. They used the same broken pieces of that ship to escape, to go on the mainland. And the Bible teaches us that even when they arrived on the mainland, of course, we know that no one died. But for Paul, they, 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 they set up a fire. It was very cold. And, and so they kindled a fire. And Paul picked up some, some wood and, and they kindled the fire. And when they kindled the fire, there was a snake that, that sprang from that fire and fastened onto his hand. Now that's a physical snake. Literally, you could see, the people would see the snake. It was fastened to his hands and and it was pumping poison into his body. And the people said, this man was a sinner. He was a murderer. He deserved to die. But although he escaped the sea, he could not escape the snake. And they were expecting that he would collapse, die. Oh my goodness. But guess what happens? He shook that snake down back into the fire. I call that shake the devil down. Someone right now, let me tell you something. You are going to shake the devil down. The devil, it's like he's pumping poison into your body. He's pumping poison into your business, into your marriage, into your ministry, uh, into your health. But I'm here to tell you that the same power that sustained Paul in that venomous snake that was uh, fastening on his heart, he shook it back into the fire. And people watched. He never died. He never dropped down. And they said, the gods have come. Oh, my goodness. I have some good news to you tell you today as we introduce this topic. You are a battle acts of God and, and weapons of war. Now, with you, God is going to what? Break down to pieces. He's going to, with you, God is going to, is going to 
tear down every kingdom of darkness. So I want to pray with you uh, as, as we wind up uh, today's teaching that the power of God will undo you. That God will use you to destroy every kingdom of darkness that is operating against your life. Whatever it is, is it sickness? Receive your healing. I take authority over you, Satan, and your demons. I break your power in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everything that is not of God, we uproot it, we take authority, we destroy you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Receive your healing, my brother. Receive your healing, my sister. Begin to do what you could not do. Remember, you are a battle axe of God and weapons of war and with you god is gonna destroy nations and with you he's gonna pull down kingdoms i'm glad that you could watch uh, this teaching today uh, please if you're the first time watching on my youtube please subscribe to my channel and leave a comment tell us what god is doing in your life and you can share the video with family and friends and may god bless you so much Shalom, shalom, shalom.